What's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Argon One Raspberry Pi 3 case. Now this works with the Raspberry Pi 3 or the 3B Plus. Before we get started here, this is a Kickstarter. It's been fully funded. You can still buy one on Kickstarter for $20 shipped to the US. They were kind enough to send over a pre-production model. Now they stated that this is 95% of what you guys are going to get. The mold will be cleaned up a little bit because I do notice some imperfections on the top panel and things like that. But overall, the quality is amazing. The top half of the case is fully aluminum. It also makes contact with the Raspberry Pi CPU to act as a giant passive heat sink. But they've also included a fan inside for extra cooling. They've also included a safe shutdown button on the case. You will need to install their proprietary script to get this up and running, but it works pretty well. I've tested it with Raspbian, and in this video, I'm going to do some thermal testing using the Argon One here versus the Flirt case. We're going to go with a fan and without the fan with the Argon One. First thing I noticed was this magnetic removable hatch here that allows you to access the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Since this is a pre-production model, I do notice some imperfections in the case itself, but they assured me that they will have this all cleaned up by the time they ship the real units out to the backers on Kickstarter. Bottom half of the case is plastic. You can access the SD card very easily. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over. As you can see, we have a full PCB that the Raspberry Pi will plug into. Now, the whole case itself acts as a heatsink. It does make contact with the CPU. And they've also included this fan here. Got your GPIO header for your Pi to plug into and some IR ports in case you want to add an IR remote. A functional safe shutdown switch as long as you install their script and a micro USB port for power. Now this is jacked directly into the PCB and it will be sending all the power to the correct GPIO pins on the Pi. So we won't have to worry about that low power indicator as long as you're using a good power supply with this case. Comes with all the hardware we're going to need to mount that Raspberry Pi in here, plus some silicone heat transfer pads, and this audio and video extension board. This is an extension board for the Raspberry Pi. It'll plug right into the HDMI and the 3.5mm audio jack, and it kind of extends both of them out to the side. I like seeing these extra boards supplied with these cases. Now, this is going to make it sit in the case a little differently, and it looks really nice when it's all tucked in there. So we really can't talk about this case here without talking about one of the most famous aluminum cases for the Raspberry Pi, the Flirt case. This happens to be my favorite case for the Raspberry Pi. I try to mention this case as much as possible because this is my go-to. Even though we have all these retro console cases out there, I love having something functional and beautiful. So this case does make contact with the Raspberry Pi CPU, which in turn transfers the heat to the aluminum case itself and passively cools the Pi. The Flirt case is available on Amazon for 15 bucks, and it's a really nice case. I'm going to have to do some thermal testing between these two cases here. Now the Argon one does have an advantage because it has a built-in fan, but I'm also going to test it with the fan unplugged because I have noticed that the Argon one is not a quiet solution. You can hear the fan. Now, it doesn't sound as bad as some of the small fans that I've heard from Amazon, but it is noticeable, and I really hate having a small computer with a loud fan. So I'll be running three tests here using the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. I'm going to test the Flirt case, I'm going to test the Argon one with the fan, and the Argon one with the fan unplugged. We're going to see who comes out on top. This is a simple test I use for all thermals that I get from my Raspberry Pis. I use Raspbian and a few scripts. We're going to max out that CPU. It's going to create a log file and give me a temperature reading every 30 seconds for 20 minutes. But first, I need to assemble the Argon One. Really easy to do. I'll be using the included silicone thermal pad on both cases. I'm going to use the exact same pad for the Flirk and this case so we don't have an advantage from that. You could always go ahead and use thermal paste if you want to, but I've never noticed a big difference with these small CPUs. I have tested it with the Flirt case in the past, and there wasn't much of a difference between using a thermal pad and some Thermal Grizzly thermal paste. Here's a look at the case fully assembled with the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus inside of it. Looks really nice in the back. Everything lines up, and you can access the SD card from the front very easily. I think it's time to put these both head to head. Like I mentioned, I will be doing three tests here. And in between each test, I'm going to give it a 10 to 15 minute cool down session. 
So I've maxed out the CPU here. Now I need to run this little script that'll create a log file. It's gonna run this for 20 minutes straight and every 30 seconds, I'm gonna get a reading here. It's gonna write it down in a log file for me so I don't even have to watch it. Between these two cases, I will be using the same exact Raspberry Pi. I will be using the same exact thermal pad power supply and it's gonna be in the same spot on my desk. The current temperature in my office right now is 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I know a lot of people are going to want to use this with RetroPie. This test here is going to stress it more than any emulator can. We have maxed out all four cores on the CPU for 20 minutes straight. And by the way, with the newest release of Raspbian and the Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, they have set the thermal throttle limit to 60 degrees Celsius. So it's a lot lower than it used to be, but I have added a soft temp limit. And by throttling, I mean the CPU underclocks itself so it doesn't overheat. It'll underclock until it gets to a stable temperature, go back to the correct stock clocks, and then come back down when it reaches that temperature again. So here we are with all three tests. First column here, we have 100% CPU time. Start one minute, five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute, and 20 minute. First up, we have the flirt case. Starting out 44 degrees Celsius. At one minute, we hit 47.8, five, 54.8, and at 20 minutes, we went to 65 degrees Celsius. So with the temp limit increased, we did not throttle this Raspberry Pi 3B+. When we reach 70 degrees, the way I have it set up now, it would throttle. So the Pi actually had full performance for 20 minutes, maxed out with the Flirt case. I think that's pretty good for no fan at all. Next up, the Argon one with no fan. We actually started out cooler and ended cooler. So we started at 43.4. 20 minutes, maxed out, 1.4 gigahertz, all four cores, 63.5 degrees Celsius. So the Argon one did cool the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus better than the Flirt case does. It's not by much, and now I really think it comes down to which one you like the look of more. They're around the same price. Now, the Argon one is $15 on Kickstarter, but it's five bucks shipping to the US, which makes it 20. Finally, I knew it was going to be better than both of them. We had the Argon one with the fan going. Like I mentioned, it does make a little bit of noise. Starting out, 41.3 degrees Celsius, and we ended at 54.2 degrees Celsius. Way cooler than both of the cases being passively cooled, and I expected that. So overall, the Argon one does a great job with or without a fan, but the Flirt case is still holding its own here. Now, with the Argon one, you do get some added features like the built-in safe power button and easy access to the GPIO pins. Now, you can always get a ribbon cable with the Flirt case and add GPIO out just like that. But the Argon one comes pre-installed with it right on the top. I think the Argon one does look a little more modern than the Flirt case, but it does have a bigger footprint also. So those are a couple things you want to consider when trying to buy one of these aluminum cases. It's really up to you in the end. I don't think you can go wrong buying one or the other. As of making this video, there are 14 days left on the Argon One's Kickstarter. If you want to back it, I'll leave links in the description. If you want to wait until they bring them to their website, you can do that also. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.